Eugene Goldstein, who's an attorney who works with uh, many undocumented people in the New York area and knows quite a lot about the fears and terrors that they face. Uh, good afternoon, Eugene. Good afternoon, Paul. Hi. We've talked quite a lot now about this issue, and there's uh, no end to it. It's very interesting. Tell folks a little bit about yourself and the type of work that you do with uh, undocumented people. Well, we've been uh, seeing a lot of undocumented uh, individuals uh, who are very concerned and very stressed, um, and we try to advise them as to what they should and shouldn't do. Um, what happens uh, if they get approached in the street, if they get a knock on the door in the middle of the night, uh, or if they get approached in a work raid, um, how to prepare for these things. Um, what should they do? How should, and that's a good place to start off. Um, if, uh, if you were giving general advice and, and I know you're not representing anybody in particular who's listening, hope, hope, uh, probably, or maybe not, maybe yes, maybe no. Um, but to, uh, basically give some general advice, uh, that people might want to do to, uh, prepare for, uh, thing, things that they fear, you know, happening. Well, for, for one thing, the website for the National Immigration Law Center has a know your rights card. And uh, you should review this. It's in multiple languages, and um, be familiar with it. But generally, uh, if someone approaches you on the street, you can ignore them. You don't, you know, you can be rude. Uh, you don't have to answer their questions. Just keep on going, because uh, sometimes an immigration officer may approach and uh, hear a an accented uh, English or a foreign language and want to know more and keep asking you questions. You do not have to answer those questions. Uh, you cannot just be stopped on the street just because an immigration officer feels like it. Uh, you have a right to uh, a lawyer. You also have a right to ask, why are you stopping me? Tell me the facts that you have that cause you to stop me. Or just simply keep on walking. Um, if you get a knock on the door, uh in the middle of the night or at any time, uh, you don't have to open the door. Uh, you can ask for a note to be stuck under the door. Uh, you can ask someone to speak through a window. The government does not have a right to enter your private space without a warrant signed by a judge. That's not by an immigration officer. That's by a judge. And the you can ask for a copy of that warrant before you have to open the door. If there is no warrant, you don't open the door. Have there been tricks? Uh, go ahead. You wanted to finish that? No, go ahead, Paul. No. Have there been, have, has it come to your attention through the work you've done that there's been tricks, that ways to try and fool or trick people into giving up their rights? Well, of course. Um, sure, you have, you know, the officer will say, uh, well, you know, make it easy on yourself because uh, we're just going to come back anyway. Well, chances are they're not going to get a warrant. Uh, they have too many other things to do and a little bit too busy for that. Um, so just say, sorry, can't open the door. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and just, yeah. just let, let them go and demand to know what facts they have to stop you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so let's say that you, a person is picked up. For whatever reason, they know who they are. They've been waiting for them. Has that happened as well? Uh, people, they know who they're looking for. They know where that person That's, goes, and they're waiting well, for them. Well, those are the easy ones for them right now because they have names and addresses. And these are people who uh, are ignoring uh, already outstanding orders uh, for deportation uh, or have uh, come back illegally that are known about uh, or have... Um, have uh, serious criminal records. Uh, these people can be um, arrested immediately and uh, will do not have to be uh, put before an immigration judge, but can be uh, uh, deported very, very shortly. Now, if someone uh, generally uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to prepare for a possible arrest uh, if there are small children in the house, uh, make sure that there's somebody who you can call right away to arrange to t uh, for child care, uh, to arrange to call a lawyer, to arrange uh, for the posting of bond. Um, have somebody out there who's available immediately. 
and let the officer know that there were small children and, you know, they'll be left alone. I see. Uh, very, very possibly the officer will say, well, uh, come, t- come downtown and meet us at such and such a time and, you know, we'll, we'll let you go. But they don't often let you go. Uh, that's going to be up to the officer. I if see. there are small screaming children, uh, I think the officer is going to have a bit of a problem. I see. Well, can they do that? I mean, have they, have there any situations? Can they just take the parents and leave the children sitting there in the room without, uh, care? Or can they seize the children? How does that happen? Well, they can. Uh, they can seize an alien. It's discretionary. And they're not, um, letting us know what their internal guidelines are, uh, if there are small children. Um, so we don't know that. Mm-hmm. Have you started now, to see, go ahead, yeah. Well, what I also wanted to mention is that there is a memorandum um, regarding arrest at sensitive locations, and that would be a uh, school or college campus uh, or in a religious institution. And they are uh, USCIS ICE, uh, rather, is not supposed to go on those premises uh, to make an arrest. They can, uh, with, under special circumstances, but they can also make an arrest outside of the campus. So they may want to arrange, uh, the, they may call a, uh, a college campus and say, would you have so-and-so, we want to chat with them, uh, meet us at the coffee shop uh, outside of campus, and they can make an arrest there. I see. So can they, are they allowed to do, like in drug cases, to, to lie? to get? You know, it's legal for an a undercover agent to lie to somebody in order to get them to sell them drugs or to buy drugs from them so uh, they can arrest them, buy and bust. Can they do the same thing with, uh, with people who ICE is looking for? Can they lie to them and say, uh, you won an award or something, or we have money waiting for you, just show up at a certain place? Can they do that kind of thing? Yes, they, yes, they can, and they have. I see. So uh, be aware in case you all of a sudden win and I'll, I'll get a call that to pick up your lottery winnings or something like that, that it might be not be what it is. Yeah, send somebody with a power of attorney. <laughs> what do you mean by a power of attorney to take care of your children? Well, power of attorney is, is, is something very important. It's a document that every state uh, authorizes that um, certain uh, legal duties uh, can be uh, assigned to a third party um, mm. who could take care of bank accounts, who could take care of child care. A little bit more than a power of attorney with uh, child care, probably want to establish a guardianship. Um, and you might want to see a uh, an attorney about that. Uh, and the legal referral service of the city bar, uh, is very good for that. They charge $35 for a half hour consultation. That's pretty good. Uh, on issues of family law. It's very good. That's very good. Uh, but that's only for the first half hour and then people have to make their own arrangements. I see. So, but they can get some immediate advice as far as what to do when you're totally scared. I mean, have you had people come into your office who are totally frightened, don't know what to do? They're terrified by what's happening. Is that an uptick in that happening or is that? Very, very much so. Uh, they're, they're, People um, who want to pull their kids out of school and go home. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's what the administration wants. Right. I was going to ask you that. Is it seems to be make it so fearful that anything could happen, nobody knows what could happen, that they'll just say this isn't worth it and go back on the self-deport, as they say. That's what the administration is hoping for. I see. That people will just leave. And already we've seen reports that uh, – that there's uh, 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 there seems to be a lot of people leaving the country into Canada, in particular if they can't go it's back to uh, other countries that they come from. They're they're going basically to Canada now. Well, there was some statistics reported today that um, about half of the uh, in- illegal entries uh, from last year were done this year, about sixteen thousand this year, uh, as opposed to over thirty thousand last year. So it may have the policies may be having a deterrent effect that way. Right. Well, weren't numbers going down anyway because the American economy had really sort of collapsed and there was not a real pull of people to come here for jobs? Well, the numbers were actually going the other way. They were going uh, they were, up, really? Th- th- no, they were, go- they were going uh, – more people were leaving than were coming in. Oh, I see. In other words, more people were actually leaving just because of the economy long before this. 
action, which always, you know, brings up my question. If, if people were leaving on their own because the economy was going sour in the United States, um, you get the feeling, and, and you know, and a wonderful movie I saw about the economic decline was uh, was The Big Short, in which at the end of the movie he says that they're always looking for somebody to blame after they get caught in, on Wall Street or wherever stealing money from the people by the billions. They've got to blame it on somebody. This time around, they're blaming it on the immigrants. That's right. That's exactly what what they're doing, and I think they're, it's more than that. I think it's racism, mm-hmm. and they're blaming it on brown people. I see. And uh, so the distract attention and the attention of, of middle America, especially which voted for Trump, away from what really happened, which is the uh, the unregulated uh, uh, casino that is Wall Street right now. Well, it's not only it's not only that. Um, you know, it's a, a lot has been going on uh, with. Uh, restrictive immigration that's been going on since uh, probably about 1996, where the law has been made more and more difficult and more and more restrictive and preventing people who otherwise and previously could have legalized uh, who the economy needs. But uh, they've been scapegoated uh, and prevented from being legalized. So this group of people gets bigger and bigger and bigger and uh, instead of blaming restrictive uh, and unnecessary uh, penalizing legislation, we blame the victims. Mm-hmm. And that seems to be working successfully now, at least outside of New York City and other big cities where people recognize that uh, that immigrants are a, a vital part of the economy. I think today uh, Scott Stringer, the uh, controller, was saying uh, that uh, $100 billion comes into New York City and, and untold millions of uh, tax funds because of the activity of uh, people from over 150 different nations in New York City. So it's really a very positive part of the New York City economy. Always has been. Right. But at the same – right. Back to the days when it was Italians and the, before that when it was Irish people. I mean, immigrants have always well, kept don't this tell Mr. don't tell Mr. Bannon about the Irish people. He might not appreciate it. Right. Oh, right, 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 right. He, <laughs> I forget that. I don't know what he thinks. He says he's American, but uh, nobody is American. Everybody's hyphenated here except the Native Americans. They're the only ones. And look how they're being treated, worse than anybody. It's just fascinating to me. Um, so again, uh, Eugene Goldstein, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Would you like to? How, what should you know? Again, just because I can't, we can't say it enough. What should people be prepared to do, and what phone numbers should they have? Uh, you know, next to their phone in an emergency. They should have the phone number of a trusted friend. They should have the phone number of a, of a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Um, if they want to do exploring beforehand, uh, a little research beforehand, uh, the number for the legal referral service of the Bar Association of the City of New York. It's in the yellow, it's in the, uh, yellow pages, or their website will jump right up there. Right. Um, but they should have uh, connections already set up and, uh, to use their social network. Mm-hmm. Uh, Don't trust so on luck. help. Be prepared, as they say in those ads all over the city. Uh, a, a, a an emergency plan isn't uh, uh, just uh, waiting for something to happen. It's actually having a plan in place and being very careful about what you do. Is that what you're saying right now? That's exactly what I'm saying. Be prepared. All right. Thank you very much, Eugene Goldstein. Uh, any uh, information? Any contact information you'd like to give out for people who uh, might want to get more information on this? Well, I'm available uh, through our website. Uh, Go to uh, eglaw at aol.com. That's my email, uh, direct email, and uh, eglaw at aol.com. And uh, we'll try and get an answer to you. Right. And, of course, you come highly, highly recommended by people who uh, really uh, have said uh, very, very uh, great things about the work and the compassion you feel for the for the people that you work with. So thank you very much for that, Eugene Goldstein. Thank you, and thank you for your kind thoughts. All right. Thank you. Bye.